Daily Mirror carried a fact check of the statement made by Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe to Sky News on the 26th of April. The Daily Mirror in its publication yesterday states that in section 121 of the Penal Code of Sri Lanka, it clearly states that, quote, whoever wages war against the government of any power in alliance or at peace with the Republic shall be punished with imprisonment, end quote. Section 114 also explains that joining an insurrection amounts to waging, aiding and abating war, which in turn should be read with section 121 of the Penal Code. The Daily Mirror says the Prime Minister was clear in his interview that despite knowing about the Sri Lankans who left to Syria, joined the Islamic State and took up arms, that it was not possible to arrest them under the Sri Lankan law. Speaking at Parliament today, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe had this to say. I would like to refer to an article which appeared, uh, Honourable Speaker, yesterday in the Daily Mirror, saying you can do this with the existing penal code. I would like to remind them that there are ongoing conflicts with competing power centres in Syria. The USA, Russia, Turkey, Iran have all intervened. We also do not want to get drawn into such a situation. Therefore, the defence lawyers can contend that there is no central power authority in Syria and that this provision does not apply to a civil conflict intervened with terrorism. The question is, we talk of a foreign power in alliance with us. And that is the matter that can be questioned in Parliament. But Section 3 of the Counter-Terrorism Bill states intimidating a population. Now you can bring them under that. And uh, Section 2.1 makes it uh, opera operation, it applies to anyone who, have done the, who has committed this crime outside Sri Lanka. Intimidating the population of Syria or intimidating the population of Libya. Therefore, it's clear that all those who have returned from Syria are within the ambit of the counter-terrorism bill. This uh, provision of the penal code was taken from the United Kingdom law, waging war against the Queen uh, the, uh, or any friendly power. But all those who return from Syria have been taken in under the terrorist laws, not under this. Even those who have returned from Iraq, whose central government is backed by them, has been taken under the terrorism law and certainly not under the existing, uh, uh, the old law. However, this is what Prime Minister Vikramasinghe told Sky News on the 26th of April. He knew they went to Syria, they joined the terrorist organization, but in our country to go abroad and return or to take part in a uh, foreign armed uprising is not an offence here. <coughs> so to join a terrorist, is Islamic State a terrorist group according to It's a terrorist group. And they joined this terrorist group? They joined a terrorist group. But we have no laws which enable us to take into custody people who join foreign terrorist group. We can take those who are in, uh, who are, who belong to terrorist groups operating in Sri Lanka. Whether you go to Syria, whether you join the French foreign legion, it's the, the same. <coughs> I know, but as far as we are concerned, you go out and take arms. <coughs> there is no law to prevent you from that, or for us to prosecute. But you take arms against the Sri Lankan government, the Sri Lankan state, yes. So that's a lacuna in our law. Following the statement made by the Prime Minister in Parliament, a debate took place regarding the counter-terrorism bill. At present, wars take place beyond battlefields. For instance, if a terrorist is driving a vehicle and destroys the lives of many individuals, we cannot consider this as a crime under the Motor Vehicle Act. It is an act of terror and therefore he should be punished for the crime of terrorism. This is why the Counter-Terrorism Act was required. Sri Lankan laws are inadequate to face global terrorism and this is why the Counter-Terrorism Act was drafted. Certain scholars and lawyers say that the prevailing laws in Sri Lanka are sufficient to combat global terrorism. Those who defined the Counter-Terrorism Act as a relief package provided to terrorists and those who make false statements to alarm the people are promoting global terrorism. Bringing down KP, LTT's successor to Prabhakaran to Sri Lanka and providing him with all the comfort is what we call a relief package. There is no relief package for terrorism. According to the Act, an individual's opposition against the government will only be limited to thought. The Act derives one's right to even express their thoughts. Our stance is that such a repressive act should not be approved by Parliament. You had never made a statement in Parliament that the law does not include any provisions to apprehend. I make a request from the Prime Minister. We are completely against this act. 
I believe that a select committee should be appointed to further discuss this matter. I during the subcommittee meeting yesterday, police officers, CID and TID directors and the secretary to the foreign ministry clearly stated that according to the attorney general, the counter-terrorism act is not required to eradicate terrorism in the country. This is also stated in the committee report. I am not sure as to how the secretary to the foreign minister was aware of this. This act was drafted with the advice of the attorney general. Inquire from the attorney general as well as the CID. The attorney general can even inquire from the chief justice. You can even inquire this from the present chief justice. This has been approved by the Supreme Court. You spoke about this counter-terrorism act. When this counter-terrorism act was brought, even we were in the government. But even we were mistaken at the time, because at the time the proposals made by the president had not been included in it. Especially today, if two people fight and one person is killed, the other will be sent to the gallows. But there is no such law for terrorists. The terrorists will be sent to jail for life. That is what the Counterterrorism Act says. We are trying to adhere to a standard of democracy not even followed by Donald Trump and Theresa May. We went to do this and now are faced with this situation. <laughs> Following are the views expressed by the opposition on the counter-terrorism bill. Many things that do not fall into the category of terrorism has been included in the Counter-Terrorism Act, and those have been denoted as terrorism. The new Counter-Terrorism Bill has been formed in a way that a protest or an anti-government march can be viewed as an act of terrorism. The Prime Minister reiterates that if the bill is in effect, this would not have happened. The speciality in these sentences in this bill is that the endeavour to turn the protests that take place in this country into acts of terrorism and the endeavour to eradicate media. I think that is how it is written in Prime Minister's script, the act to eradicate explosions and riots. He is merely following his script, but due to following the script he has forgotten that the second incident, the riots and the destruction did not take place. <laughs> Abolish the Prevention of Terrorism Act. But why are they trying to bring in the Counterterrorism Act? This is because the government, including the UNP, is trying to pass the ball to others to rid themselves from taking the responsibility for the April 21st attacks. They are attempting to justify their negligence by claiming that the necessary laws were not in place and they are trying to deceive the country. Further, they are attempting to shield themselves from the blame to protect their unsuccessful political careers by bringing this counter-terrorism act. However, Rani Vikramasinghe was not equally interested to bring his friend Arjun Mahendran, who fled the country after looting the central bank even after four years since the incident. He did not take the action to enforce the law according to the findings of the COPE committee report. We condemn this opportunistic attempt to take advantage of this sorrowful situation. May I was talking about the days of the last year.